11. If you want to go ahead and open up your Bibles there, and we're going to open up with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Gracious Father, Lord, uh, we invite you in now. We know your, your presence is everywhere at all times, and yet, Lord, we can block you out. And we just want you to be um, completely in our heart, mind, soul. Lord, immerse us that we would hear from your word. Uh, and Lord, that we would change. I pray, Father, that you would work in, in us your good pleasure, your work. And Father, that if there's any sins that, it, that have been committed throughout the day that would prevent us from that, we know that you're faithful and just to forgive us if we confess to you. So we do that now, Lord. And just ask that you wash us, make us white as snow. We surrender every part of us to you, Lord God. Have your will. And Lord, we desire to know you more. Please reveal yourself to us through this, through this uh, Bible study. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's go ahead again and open up your Bibles to Leviticus yeah. chapter 11. We're continuing off where we left off, um, which I believe was verse 23. So we're going to be in verse 24 through, and we're going to try to get to the end. Um, what we went through last week, if you don't remember was the foods, the different foods that, that the Israelites were, were oh, um, yeah. said that they could eat, yeah. things they couldn't eat, and we said it was kind of the buffet of the Lord, and there were, there were certain animals that were unclean. Yeah, and yeah. Um, when we think of unclean, we said that there's multiple reasons why they said this, whether it was ceremonial, or whether it was because it was an animal that would have bacteria and different kinds of worms or different things in it that could harm somebody. Um, many of many of those animals at that time were unclean and it was unclean for people around the world to eat but then there was also um, animals that people in, in the, the world or the countries around them would be eating mm -hmm. and sacrificing to gods and things of that nature so the Lord had identified certain foods they were supposed to eat certain foods they were not that were clean or unclean mm -hmm. and as we get into themselves. tonight as we get into tonight uh, we're going to go a little bit further than that. It's not enough to know what's unclean, but then to not be party of things that are unclean. And so tonight we've kind of entitled today's message, uh, our Bible study, Bad Company Corrupts Good Character. And what does this mean? It means it's not just enough to consume you know, sin. Sometimes if you're around the sin, you're party to it. Mm -hmm. The Lord says he considers it wrong if we're enjoying others who are enjoying sin, right? So as we get into this, you're going to see that, that there's a, a, a shadow of this precept that's being taught in the New Testament here in the Old Testament with the Israelites. So let's go ahead and begin in verse 24 of Leviticus chapter 11. Uh, verse 24 says, And for these you shall be unclean. Whosoever shall touch us, the car carcass, them shall be unclean until until the evening. So the thing here is it's not as much as a, of a sin issue as much as you partake in. So sometimes even as Christians, we can come alongside somebody and, and still have to come to the Lord and repent if they're doing something that's wrong, right? And we're party of that. Doesn't mean you're not saved. Doesn't mean, but so there's no sacrifice that's being done here. But he says that, there, that there's an unclean period there, that there, you're not even to touch anything that's... Uh, that's um, that's a carcass or that's been has death upon it and again what happens to things that die when we see it on the side of the road they rot they rot right and all kinds of bacteria and harmful things can and come things so there's a practical so there's a practical reason right why why we would um not want to be touching dead things as much as there's an unclean spiritual thing that we're going to get into a little bit in this um but verse 25 continues on says and whosoever beareth ought of the car carcass of them shall wash his clothes and and be unclean until the evening so there's a process in order to get this off of you that we know now what happened when covid came everybody was using um that alcohol right to clean their hands all the time to make sure that no, no bacteria was on your hands and and so there's a process to be unclean or to be clean and there's mm -hmm. still a process spiritually that the lord has allowed for us to be clean or unclean so this is this is uh, a practical lesson that's being taught to the children of Israel. And you're going to see there's a reason why he's going through this painstaking effort to show them all of these things. And we'll see that at the, at the end of this chapter. The carcass of every beast which divideth the hoof. He goes into a little bit more detail on which animals of the hoof and, and is not cloven nor cheweth the cud are unclean unto you. Everyone that toucheth them shall be unclean. Again, not just eating, 
but even touching or, or, wow. or coming upon that. The, the Bible talks about, even if you, it, later on, Jesus talks about that your righteousness must exceed that of the Pharisees who would always do these ritualistic things. Mm -hmm. and, and we know that committing adultery was one of the things you're not supposed to do. And Jesus said, I tell you that if you even look upon a woman mm -hmm. with lust in your heart, you've committed adultery. So you didn't touch, but you looked. It was in your mind, there's this thing. And, and so we know that there's a, there's a spiritual connotation to every sin also that goes beyond just because you didn't do it doesn't mean you didn't do it, right? Mm -hmm. Like he says, if you if you have say raka or, or or murder or death to your brother, you're you're murdering them, even though you didn't literally murder them. But you because you desire that, it's still murder in God's eyes. And so it says in verse twenty seven, and whatsoever goeth upon his paws among all manner of beast that go upon all four, those are unclean unto you. Whatsoever touches the carcass or the dead shall be unclean until the evening and he that beareth the carcass of them shall wash his clothes and be be unclean until the evening until they are clean unto you so there's not just a washing of our bodies but there's a washing of those things that touch our bodies right the, the places that we go it may not be um, you know our surroundings can be evil too or be dirty and we should even clean not just ourselves but the things we're hanging around, right? The, the areas around us, we want to be clean so that we don't get undirty, right? And obviously these clothes, what can happen to, to them if you're carrying stuff? Uh, let me give you a, a, an example. One time when I was a deacon, there was an elderly lady who had asked if I could come to her house and tear up her carpet and, and, and do a whole bunch of things because she had bed bugs. Now, anyone oh. who knows anything about bed bugs is they're highly contagious. And, and I shouldn't say contagious, but they propagate quickly. And they can get on you and spread, and, and they'll get in your house and go all over. And I, was, I, was, I had to pray to the Lord about that one. I'm like, okay, I'll do that. But as soon as I got home, I literally almost got naked at my front doorstep before I went inside oh to get those clothes out because the clothes were dirty too. And this is what he's saying is even the clothes are dirty. Um, and, and we know that that uh, in the Bible, he. He tells us that he clothes us in white robes. So it's his blood, the hyssop of the Lord, that makes us clean, right? But even our best efforts to do good on our own, to clean ourselves, the Lord says are like filthy rags, dirty. So it's only by the Lord that we can be made clean. And, and this is a shadow of, of again, of what, that, what the Lord was talking about later in the scriptures as he's revealed. Verse 29, it says, these also shall be unclean unto you among the creepy things that crawleth upon the earth, the weasel, the mouse, the tortoise, after his kind, the ferret, um, sorry, Di Diana, uh, the chameleon, sorry, um, Stacy, uh, the lizards, <laughs> and the snails, and the mole, and these are unclean among you all that creep. Whatsoever doth touch them when they, are, when they be dead shall be unclean until the evening. So again, there's an there's, there's uncleanness of them, and then there's an uncleanness when they're dead. You may think it's okay to touch something because it's dead, but no. You may think something's dead, and, and then there's that, there's that old expression that, yeah, you've got the, the, the um, bacteria and everything you've got to worry about, but what happens if it's a snake you think is dead, and you go grab it, and Ugh. it turns around and bites you, right? Mm -hmm. so, so even there's, there's sin is death, and death begets death. So even if it seems harmless, it's not harmless. There's things unseen that are harmful. Mm -hmm. um, and verse 32, it says, And then to, upon whatsoever any of them, when they are dead, doth fall, it shall be unclean, whether it be a we, uh, uh, any vessel of wood, raiment, skin, sack, whatsoever vessel it be, wherein any work is done, it must be put into water, it shall be unclean. Hi. Come on in. Come on. Yeah, sit anywhere. It, shall, it, it must be put into water and shall be unclean until the evening, so it shall be cleansed. So again, the same issue of cleaning your surroundings, not just yourself, but not just yourself, but everything that's that's um, around you needs to be clean. And there's this thing about desiring to have people around you, bringing them to the Lord so that they can be clean too, right? It's, and we're going to get into this a little bit about bad company corrupts good, good character and that we're to be careful. And we're going to talk about some of the scripture verses that tell us this. But then there's also the desire that all should come to repentance and be saved, which is the Lord's desire, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And he's called us to go out to those who are unclean and bring them in. Mm -hmm. And 
verse 33 says, every vest, every earthen vessel whereunto any of them falleth whatsoever it is. It shall be unclean, and you shall and you shall break it. So he's saying destroy something if it's been corrupted. You know how many of us hold on to something we think is a value that's been bad to us in our lives? Whatever it could be a habit, it could be something that you idolize, something somebody. that you're putting in, some idols you have you're looking at and you're putting before God or making them your intercessor or whatever it could be that could be before God. Remember, remember um, in the scriptures when Gideon. That he was a fearful man and he was hidden and he was hiding and the Lord says calls him out it sends an angel that calls him a mighty man of valor and he has to go and he tears down the idols that are in the area and so these idols need to be utterly destroyed get rid of them sometimes we hang on to them because we think they have sentimental value no get rid of it if it's going to cause it, it, it could cause harm to you later that you may not realize and tempt you so get rid of it so this is they break it and again there's the practical reason right if there's some something that's had dead blood or something on it, it can get bacteria and it can get all kinds of infest, in, infection and stuff like that. So get rid of it completely if, if it can't be washed and cleaned um, like your clothes. In verse 35, it says, and everything whereupon, and, and by the way, let me go a little bit further on that one real quick. With clothes, even though it can penetrate the clothes, we can clean it, right? Mm -hmm. But with something that's wood, it can go deep within. Mm -hmm. And remember, there's sometimes, for whatever reason, there's some people that just have deep-rooted sin that desire to keep in it, and the Lord is telling you to stay away from that. Completely separate or sever that from you. If, if there's something in that case where they refuse to be washed in the blood of the Lamb, if they refuse in the forgiveness of God, if they refuse in the Spirit that's been poured upon them and convicting them, and it's not going to come out, then depart from that reckon them dead the lord talks about sending people out two by two to mm. tell the good news to everybody mm. and he says if you knock on the door and they open the door and and you're able to bring light into that house and you're able to come in and wash the minds and bring truth of of god to them then stay and make your abode and let the word wash them however if they reject then he says walk out and kick the dust off your feet and keep going what that literally means and you think about it you're kicking dirt kind of like a dog burying it's <laughs> you're you're reckoning you're reckoning them dead you're saying i recognize you dead or eradicated or done and i'm moving on and this is something that they're doing here you know it's a shadow of that is to destroy it verse 35 it says in everything whereupon any part of the carcass falleth shall be unclean thereupon whether it be the ovens, the ranges, the pots, shall be broken down, for they are unclean. Remember, these were clay, so they were porous. For if it could be cleaned, it could be cleaned. They, they are unclean and shall be unclean unto you. Nevertheless, the fountain or the pit wherein there is plenty of water shall be clean, but that which touches their carcass shall be unclean. If any part of their carcass fall upon the sowing seed which shall be sown, it shall be clean. But if the water be put upon the seed, any part of the carcass shall fall off, shall be unclean. Again, just stating the same things. And if any beast of which you may, may eat die, they sh he sh that touches the carcass thereof shall be unclean until evening. Again, this is something that you're eating and, that, and, and it's been given time to rot. And so, you know, some of you need to clean out the refrigerator. Don't just pull out the rot stuff that's growing and trying to walk out on its own. You need to go back in and clean it out and disinfect and get it all out there. Pull the shelves out and get to the root, right, of the problem. Mm. You got to get to the bottom. So uh, verse 40 says, And he that eateth the carcass of, of it shall wash his clothes and be, be clean until the evening. <coughs> I'm sorry, unclean until the evening. He also that beareth the carcass of it shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening and every creepy thing that creepeth upon the earth shall be an abomination he's going into a little more detail on the type of creepy things that he talked about earlier in the chapter um, shall be an abomination it shall not be eaten whatsoever goeth upon its belly and whatsoever goeth upon all four and whatsoever hath feet among all creepy things that creep upon the earth them ye shall not eat for you, for they are an abomination you shall not make yourself you shall not make yourselves abominable with any creepy thing that creepeth upon that creepeth neither shall you make yourselves unclean with them again getting into this partnering or being one with 
um, and, and we're going to get into this. Actually, we can go into this right now. But um, so, so Galatians chapter five verse nine says, "A little leaven leaveneth the whole loaf." And I kind of mentioned some of this as far as bad company corrupts good character. Similarly, even a little bit of leaven, when you get into the bread, the whole bread gets permeated with that leaven, and it raises. You know, this is why you read. And 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 usually in the Bible, although there are some examples where he talks about heaven, when the Jesus is talking about heaven, is like leaven that leavens. In other words, light permeates, and once it permeates, it can make the whole, whole thing clean, speaking of himself. But sin is also this way. And so most of the time when leaven's mentioned in the Bible, it represents sin and how a little bit can corrupt a lot. And we talk about the Pharisees coming in with self-righteousness and how their leaven can leaven the whole loaf because people are relying upon their own works to be clean or made clean when we know that the only way we're made clean is through the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. And so here we go um, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11, it says, And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done in secret. But all things that are reproved may be manifested by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. There, wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. So what is he saying? That in the midst of even these dead things, God can bring to life what is dead. God can take whatever's wrong with you and bring it. But we must come to the light that our deeds must be reproved. We must take it to the, to the, um, to the, do you ever see um, in forensics, they have actually special lights like UV lights or whatever, and they'll come into the, into a room that looks spick and span to everyone by and the naked blue, eye. Blue. But then as soon as they shine that light, mm -hmm. all the blood shows and any mm -hmm. kind of bodily fluids show out and they stand out all over the place, right? This is what the Lord's word does is come not just to expose those things that are bringing death or that leaven, but to eradicate it, to wash it, to make it white as snow. And this is the only way that can happen is through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, which washes us and makes us white as snow. But nevertheless, should we go around grabbing that stuff that the Lord says causes uncleanness? Mm -mm. Should we go along hanging with that in our mm -mm. lives? Mm -mm. No, get rid of it. As a matter of fact, create barriers, as we just said. Make sure that you, you separate yourself <laughs> from that. Um, and 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17 says, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be you separated, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will, and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons <laughs> and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. So there's this incredible hope and promise that no matter what you've gotten death killed or infected with or who you've hung out with in the past you can have a new life in the lord jesus christ you can have forgiveness and mercies and grace and and a newness of life and so as we continue on here you're going to see that this is all for a reason what is the reason the lord wants to clean you what is the reason the lord wants to pull you out of darkness is so that you don't have death and you have life right but not just life but life more abundantly life eternal life what what is life what is life? God. God. To be in God. To be in his holy presence. To be in the mercies of the creator of the universe. To be one with him. And to have the incredible blessing of love. True, unconditional love. Love that permeates every being of us. Every cell of our being. And so this is what it says. And by the way, as he does this to you, what is he doing? He's pulling you out. Employee. Off of the shelf. You know, I, I, I'm i not ashamed to say I don't mind going to the Goodwill. And I don't mind going to Amvets to find a nice shirt. I like and sometimes you'll walk in and it's a little funky in there. You know, it's like, <laughs> I don't know. They haven't clo cleaned that stuff. But I'll go through that whole area and I'll find like a shirt that just, I'm like, yeah, that thing's nice. And I'll grab it and I'll take it home and I'll wash it and it's mine. It's now separated from that other place. It's mm -hmm. smelled of funk. And you've been called out to be holy and separated unto God's glory. He's chosen you. As he's gone throughout the entire world, he's chosen you to be sons and daughters. And it says in verse 43, um, you shall not make yourselves an abominable, creepy thing. I'm sorry, verse 44. For I am the Lord 
your God. You shall <laughs> therefore sanctify yourselves. You shall be holy or set apart, for I am holy. Neither shall you defile yourselves with any manner of creepy thing and creepy things upon the earth. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt or out of the sin or out of the world and, and to be your God. You shall therefore be holy for I am holy. He will, where he is, Jesus Christ says, I will bring you for where I am, you shall be. And he's bringing us now into this place. He's preparing us now for this incredible holy place. He's washing us now for this per perfect place. And so he's asked us to take a part in that. Stop getting dirty. <laughs> it's not that he won't keep cleaning you, but stop going out there and getting in, get, you know, getting um, dirty in the mud, hanging out where you used to hang out with, hanging out with the same people, saying the same things, doing those same things that permeate that you thought were nothing, that have caused you great harm. And it says, um, to be your God, you shall be therefore holy, for I am holy. Verse 46, this is the law of the beasts and of the fowls and every creature of the, um, that moveth on the waters and every creature that creepeth upon the earth to make a difference between the unclean and the clean, between the beasts that, that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. So, so they're closing this out, but obviously this is, this is an opportunity for us to see that which is good and that which is not. And what has the Lord imparted unto us to give us a distinguishment or to be able to, to discern what is of God and what is not? Bible. His word. His word. He's given it. It's a, it's a light that literally, like I said, extinguishes like the forensic person in this world that we can walk through it and be holy and be clean and be separated from among these things that can corrupt and bring death in our lives. And by the way, you have the ability to lead others into the same thing. Those that, 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 that are, and but we want to be careful not to entangle ourselves, not to become intimate. The Lord says, have no fellowship or communion or oneness of family. You know, when Jesus was having the, the, the Passover supper and he's having communion, you know, that communion is meal. Back then when they ate, they got intimate and they had a bowl in the middle and everyone had bread and they were all dumping, dunking their bread and there was a lot of Bacteria forget forgive me forgive me for my term but a lot of a lot of spit swapping going uh. on there there's double double dipping breaking the rule you know all kinds of stuff because you're with family because it's intimate they had a better immune system we didn't we didn't want to do we don't want to yeah. have communion or get intimate no with somebody we shouldn't be right we don't want to have relations jesus even in the bible when it talks about the grace that's upon us he said, should I then therefore join myself together with a harlot? In other words, get intimate with one. Should I bring Jesus into this? No, because who's with you now? Jesus. So we don't take him into where we want to go. We go where he takes us and we remain clean. Amen. And as soon as we do the wrong thing, what do we do? Repent and wash and, and ask forgiveness and he cleanses us. So this is where we're going to close out today. But again, another incredible chapter of the Old Testament that as we look at it through the light of the revelation of Jesus Christ gives us great wisdom for living today. It's not just for then, it's for now too. So let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Gracious Father, Lord, we thank you for your word. Truly you illuminate what where we are, Lord God, and, and what we need. And, and we, we thank you, Father, for setting us apart for your good pleasure. Uh, for your purposes, but to bestow upon us the blessings of your holy presence. And Lord, we don't want to take that for granted. We don't want to live two lives with one foot in the world and one foot in uncleanness and one foot in cleanness. We want to jump completely into your light. And, and Father, to be clean as you are clean and to be holy as you are holy. And we thank you th that you're a good Father who pulls us from this. We thank you that you even make it difficult for us to go to that. I pray, Father, that we would be lights to other people to show them what they're stuck in, that they would come out from it. Thank you for your word that gives us the wisdom on how to do that. And thank you for these, your children. Help us walk away from here changed and convicted in our heart to stay away from things that are unclean and sever things that we need to. Thank you for what you're going to do. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.